You see, I was in the Middle East and because of the wars and whatever, the, whatever reason that there was, then I, let's run away from here, it's kind of dangerous, we're going to be killed, there is no future here, what are we working for so hard trying to build a future, it will be destroyed with one bomb. So let's run away, let's come to Australia, let's go to America, let's go to Europe, let's go to Canada. The Western world is more advanced, there is democracy, there is freedom, there is human rights, we're going to be free, we'll do whatever we wish to do. And we came to these countries. Are you happy? Are you fulfilled? Maybe your nose looks a little bit better now. And the eyebrows, you've got a laser done for it. Maybe you have a house you didn't have back where you came from. Maybe now you have more money. Maybe now you have a better job. Maybe now you have not one car, but so many cars parked outside and in the garage. But the question is, are you fulfilled? Are you happy? Have you found what you were looking for? Has that freedom that you came all the way from the other side of the globe to here, have you found, has that freedom given you what you're looking for? Nothing. Still the same old miserable person. And I'm wondering what else is left. King Solomon, with the wisdom which he received from the Almighty God, you know, there are four things. If you have them, you rule the world. Four things King Solomon teaches us. If you have them, you will rule the world and you'll do anything and everything under the sun. One, health. Two, wealth. Three, wisdom. Four, authority. I'll say it again. Health. Number one. Two, wealth. Number three, wisdom. Number four, authority. Guess what? King Solomon had them all. He was the healthiest man on earth. And to prove that, he had 1,000 wives. Man, you can't deal with one. Good luck dealing with 1,000. You must be extremely healthy, my dear friend. He had the wealth, the Holy Bible says, that he was so much wealthy, he considered the gold like dirt. He was this wealthy, richer than Elon Musk. With all love and respect, I like the guy. <laughs> yeah, mate, yes. Mm. He had so much wealth, I meant it when I said I like the guy. He had so much wealth, he looked at gold as if it was dirt. Wise, he received wisdom from God himself, from Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The ultimate, the only source of wisdom, not the ultimate, the only source of wisdom, from Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He received wisdom. and. Authority on earth, my beloveds, there is the highest rank and there is the lowest rank. And I'll focus on these two. And there is the in between, but that's not my topic. The highest rank, I'll start with the lowest. The lowest rank on earth is a slave. And the highest rank in this world is the king. Solomon was a king. The highest rank, authority. The highest authority he had. The wisest man on earth, the wealthiest man on earth, and the healthiest man on earth. He ruled the whole world. And he says in the book of Ecclesiastes, which is the book of repentance, he says, I have given my heart everything it desired. And I did not stop my eyes from seeing everything it wished to see. 
but at the end of my long life, I'll say this to all of you, everything is the vanity of all vanities. It is nothing but one big lie. One big lie. One big lie. Because he realized you can gain the whole world and you can rule the whole world as the elites are trying to do. And you can do whatever you want with the wealth you have. And you can go anywhere with the health you have. But at the end, if you don't have God who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, then all of this is nothing. Vanity. Vanity of all vanities. So humanity have been searching for their perfect world. Trying everything under the sun. And the more they try, the bigger of a failure they are. The world is a failure. Governments are failures. Human race have failed miserably. Why? Because they are searching in the wrong place for the wrong reason. They're searching in the wrong place for the wrong reason. Adam was placed in this place called Eden where he was in the presence of God. But you know why he failed? As St. Paul puts it so beautifully in his epistles to the Corinthians, and this is what we call the study of typology. Because the Holy Bible can be approached in so many different ways. Typology means there is one thing here and there is something like it. It's a type of it. So he talks about the former Adam and the latter Adam. The former Adam, the one who failed and brought God's word. And the latter Adam, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who fulfilled all of God's word and law. So when we come in that approach of that typology, the typological approach, and we look at the former Adam and the latter Adam, what was the reason for the former Adam's failure and what was the reason for the latter Adam's success? One thing. The former Adam, God was with him. The latter Adam, he was with God. The former Adam, he was in the Garden of Eden. The latter Adam, the Garden of Eden was in him. And what is Eden? A moment. What is that moment? When I am in the presence of God. When I am in the presence of God. So what is that perfect world? What is that perfect place every human being needs to find and discover? That place is called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Period.